Hello and welcome back to episode five of the NFT Developer Diary series. I'm Kyle and I'm going to be taking you through today everything key I did with the Boo Crew metadata. We're following on from episode four. Key takeaways from this are as follows. We're going to show you how I built the system to write in each row in the metadata. So a single row and subsequently all 10,000, how we did that programmatically. We're then going to show you how I went through and checked that the rarity percentages I put in actually worked, made sure I was happy with that. And also, as a bonus, I'm going to show you how I dealt with clashes, because you might have realized along the way that if you just tell the system to generate loads and loads of this at random, although there are like hundreds of thousands of combinations, if you run it 10,000 times, you're going to get a lot of clashes. And actually, when I ran Boo Crew for real, I think my system actually avoided something like 10,000 clashes as well. So just because of the nature of large numbers and how it all works, you have to deal with that as well. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do then, now we've written all these methods to actually pick, you know, which type of hat and whether or not it's going to have a little boo and, and all that kind of thing. What I've done, I've gone up to the top here where we had our, if you remember, we wrote in all the headers for the CSV file. What I've done, I've copied that and I'm going to come down here all the way underneath and I'm going to drop it in here just so we can see it. I'm then going to make a new method called, let's call it generate one rand, ooh, rand row, something like that. We're going to give it a number for the ID of the boo that we're going to generate. So we'll just call that um, boo ID. All right, like that. Make a new method. The next thing is, again, I want this to be understandable and I want to make sure as many people as possible get the idea. You know, I'm sure you can come up with much cleaner ways to write this, but let me show you one way. And this is how I initially wrote the code. All right. So the first thing is, we want to literally, for every single one of these variables here, we're going to want to generate that. So first things first, we're going to say, um, I'm going to put these in caps as well, just so we can distinguish between, obviously we've got now the concept of the file name. We've got a row header in the CSV called file name. Um, we're going to have variables in here as well. So we need to distinguish them somehow. So let's just do that. So file name equals, and we're going to say uh, boo crew. A, so that's for series A, this is how I named them. And then we're gonna say, for the time being, we're gonna put plus and then boo ID. All right, easy peasy that one. And uh, what we're gonna to need to do is put that inside of a string, because otherwise Python will be upset with us. The next thing is number equals, literally we'll just give that the boo ID. And now we need to start calling these methods we've made up. So if we do, um, TOD equals, hopefully we've got ran TOD there. Yes, we do. So we're just literally going to call each one. So let's do that. Background. And here you can see our ran background method here. It takes in that TOD variable. So we've what's happened here is we've asked for a random time a day. And if we scroll up, we can see, you know, you get day, dusk or night. And then our other method that we made before, if you remember, it checks, you give it one of these three and then it checks that. And then essentially that tells it where in the folder structure later it's going to go. So then we're going to go body type, run the body type. And I think from here on out, I'm just going to go quiet. I'll speed this bit up because it's pretty clear what I'm going to do. Even though body color and body type are actually nested in different folders for the, the translucent ones and the standard, because they've got the same options within each, we didn't need to like nest the the type in here like that. However, for hat type, you can see, sorry, hat color, you can see our method did take that, as we said before. The reason I've got folder there will become clear later. You don't actually need to do this part. It's just because my computer is a bit old, to be quite honest, and I did not want to put <laughs> 10,000 images in one folder. I fragmented them across 10 folders. We've already written our CSV file to um, right at the top here, this make CSV. It takes in a 
array like this. So what we're doing all the way down here is we're saying, um, and we'll just type it out again for you. So yeah, single row equals, and then all we need to do is put in all of these, all of these values up here like this. And because they're all gonna line up nicely with where they should be, um, we should be good to go. And I'll speed this up as well. And then finally, all we've got to do is say make CSV single row. And there we go. So let me delete this. Okay, now we're outside of all our methods. I'm just going to do that up to nine. All right, so I made a slight mistake there. Sorry, I should have said zero to nine and then A plus one because, um, yeah, because it's counting from zero and we want the first ID to be one. We're going to add on. It also uh, stops counting at eight. So, yeah. Just be aware that array, so when you're working with arrays, uh, for loops, that kind of thing, um, especially with programming, lots of uh, programming languages start at position zero and not position one. Um, so you do have to deal with it like that. Anyway, let's run it again. And there we go. You can see they're popping in there. Um, if I just get rid of this, make give us a bit more room and I just keep running that, you can see it's just repeating the same, but you can see that they're not actually the same. They're actually random. There, uh, You can see that one is indeed very different to that one there. Um, and equally, that's going on across the board. So that's good. Right, we've got it. There you go. That's your first set of randoms. Now, all you got to do if you want to make 10,000 of them <laughs> is change this to 10,000 like that. Let's just delete and um, it will do it. Now, let's run that. And you can see that finished in literally one second. Okay, so actually it's good to show you this. If you do get this problem here, um, where it's added the row like that, if you click there, scroll down to the bottom, and then just delete it like that. So yeah, if we hit enter, sometimes this can be a bit funny. I'll go through with you later if you want how to programmatically deal with it. If I hit run again, we can see Bosch just like that. We've got all these boos coming in and that's all of your metadata generated super fast done and now you can check through it and make sure you're happy with it like that but at the end and we can go through and check um, for clashes we can look for problems we can make sure the rarities are correct all this stuff can be done on very lightweight very quick data all right and we can see immediately um, straight away there look if i go back to here we've just got bukru a1 well we probably want them to look like this all right that's certainly how i wanted them and maybe like that for triple o 20 and equally when you get to here you want it to look like this right so one of ten thousand and things like that you can spot quickly and deal with let's move on now let's tidy up some of these bits and we'll look at clashes cheers to speed up the check-in, what I've done, I've written a quick method down here that sits in front of the, the auto generator of the 10K. And what it does, it opens that CSV file we have got in W mode, which means it will overwrite it. And as you can see, all it's doing is opening up this file and it's overwriting the entirety of that file. If we go up to the top with just the headers again, and then the next bit runs as we've seen before. That's just gonna save you a little bit of time. We're now gonna deal with those clashes and we're gonna do that using pandas. If you remember before, um, right at the start, I was saying about importing it as PD like that, make sure you do it. Um, if you're having issues with that, look at a tutorial about um, pip. You may just not have the pandas library installed, um, in which case you need to use pip to install it. I've written then this method here called check if exists. The idea of this method is literally, we're gonna give it a row, check, call it check row like that. So again, we'll give it a row, which will be one of these. And essentially what we're gonna ask it is if, does it appear in our CSV file? B data, so boo data equals PD, so pandas.readCSV. And if we're lucky, it's gonna literally suggest this to us. Oops, give it the quotes and then bosh like that. Really nice, really easy so far. Um, the way this is actually gonna work is it's going to say um, we're just going to, for now, just say, oops, we're going to say index uh, list, oops, list equals 
nothing. And then we're going to just set up some quick if statements. So if index list equals equals, so is is identical to that, then return false because then it doesn't exist. And give it an else return true. Okay, so what are we doing here? So I took a lot of time figuring this out, but the only efficient way I could find in terms of computational efficiency was to get pandas to basically tell me every every index in the pandas data frame where that row exists, okay? Or more importantly, where a set of criteria are met, all right? So what do I mean by that? Let's say we wanted to just test if time of day, um, if there was a value of time of day in there, all right? Um, and we'll say daytime. So first of all, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. We're gonna say B data like that. So what this is saying is the Boo data, <laughs> pandas data frame, okay? Then we're gonna say, give me, okay? Give me those values. All right, so we've got to put this in brackets because this is going to be an expression. All right, and we're going to say B data, where inside it, the TOD, exactly as it's written here, all right, is, is equal to, and let's just get some space, that check row there, position two. All right. Now let's just go through that. So position zero, uh, more importantly, sorry, position zero, one, two, like that. And what I'm saying is go in here and get me all rows, but more importantly, all indexes of rows, the row index we can see uh, here. Um, it, well, it'd be this minus one, because we, we've got, it's got headers. Um, and you know, give them to me where the time of day is equal to whatever the time of day is in the row, we're gonna check it, all right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get it to print uh, index list for us, all right? Now I'm gonna comment this stuff out because um, that's gonna get in our way. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to need to call this. So we say check if exists row in, and we're gonna give it, I'm gonna type out a row. I'll do it really fast, I'll come back. Okay, so now if we put test this row in, all I've done, I've just grabbed a row at random, but all this is gonna check for, right, is give me all the rows where uh, they have a value equal to whatever this is, which whatever this is, which is that. So basically give me every row ID where the, uh, the time of day equals day, let's run it. Okay, so now we're done. If we run that like this, if we scroll up um, and we go into our file, you can see indeed there's 7896. Um, so we actually need to go to 3678. There we go, and there it is. So there's the clash. Again, we can, uh, if, we, if we play with this a bit more, we could change that to purple and then run it again. And you can see there we've got uh, two quite close here, uh, 7915. But the key point is, you know, if we if we change this enough, like if I change that to be a crown and then, oops, and then diamond, we might not have any clashes. And there you go. You can see actually that doesn't even exist at all. So that's good. That's what we wanted. Brilliant. Now, all we've got to do is implement that into our generator and we can get rid of all the clashes forever and never have them again. Excellent. All right, we're on the final push now. All we need to do is essentially in our generate one row method, we just need to make a few changes. So first thing is we're gonna say check, actually we'll call that check like that. And then we're just gonna run check if exists on that single row, because literally we've got the method down here to do it. Uh, I've also commented out that because that's gonna be horrible. Um, <laughs> keep printing. Um, and then what we're going to say is if check 
equals false. So if it doesn't exist, then we want to uh, do, oh, how's that working? So it should be a capital like that. Yeah, if check equals false, then make that row. So do it else. We want to print that there's a clash and then we'll just for fun we'll give ourselves the um the number so the foo id and then we're basically going to recursively rerun this whole method uh called generate one row uh like that foo id in all right just like that and now um what i've done i've uncommented this part again so that we can run it once more uh we're going to get rid of that because we don't need it anymore we don't need to print it and then I'll be back. I'm going to time lapse this next bit and we'll take it from there. All right, let's run it. Sorry, yet again, I always forget to do this. So if we do it like that, that should work nicely now. Okay, let's try it again. All right, and we're done. Excellent. You can see there, all 10,000 are in. And if we check our file, we should be able to scroll through all the way to the bottom. Yep, and they're all in there. Absolutely spot on. Um, there's a few bits I'll do to tidy up the code uh, while we're offline, but for now, I hope that's helped you. We can now use this information to both generate the art and then finally generate the JSON to upload it via the API. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.